Welcome to another edition of Comic Station. This is a special interview. Uh, some of you may be familiar with this little background setup that I have here uh, and my little toys and all. But today we have a special interview with a comic book artist many of you may be familiar with. And he has a new comic coming out. His name is Brian J.L. Glass. Uh, Brian, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, where we might know you from? Hey, hello, I'm, I'm uh, Brian J.L. Glass. Uh, I'm mostly known for the Mice Templar. Uh, I've won two Harvey Awards for my work on that. And I'm currently here after uh, doing various things for Marvel and DC to uh, hype my uh, highly anticipated new Dark Horse book, Furious. There you go. So you're a master at the plugs. You've been, you've been around the block a little bit. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we've run some interview gambits with uh, some new, new comic book artists, independents, and some that have been here. So you're one of the ones that know the, know the drill. Yeah, I do my best. We, we all start somewhere. Yep. Uh, I really like doing the little ones as well. And Dark Horse has been really good about offering such a wide uh, branch of different genres. Dark Horse has been great. Image has been great. I've been happy with everything I've done. Yes. Uh, so like you mentioned, you uh, have Mice Templars. You also have, uh, what is it, 86 Volt. You had Thor First Thunder. By the way, I love Thor. Cool. So, I like him too. That's awesome. Uh, Valkyrie as well for Marvel. Uh, and as you mentioned, you have the Harvey Awards for 2009 and 2010. So yeah. we have a well-branched alum here. So <laughs> nice to have you on. It's great uh, to be here. I brought wine. Ooh, that's always a good thing. I never, I, I really should. You would think from my other videos, some of you may be familiar. I had that big wine uh, rack in my the back of that vi those videos. For some reason, I don't bring wine up here. Uh, All right. Yeah, change uh, that. Yeah, really do. <laughs> really do. In vino uh, veritas. Yes. Um, All right. So. First, just uh, for Furious, since that is our new comic, it is coming out uh, actually on Wednesday, the 29th. Uh, let's go over a little bit about it. What, what made you want to do it? Was this something that uh, Dark Horse came to you? Did you come to Dark Horse? What inspired it? Well, uh, Furious has been in my head in various forms uh, for probably about 25 years. She was a, The, the storyline was originally inspired by my reading of... Uh, Daredevil Born Again by Frank Miller and David nice. Kelly. And I so was taken by that approach of you you have a, a hero that you know everything about, you, you've been through hell with him, and in that story, hopefully 25 years later, it's not a spoiler, uh, he is dismantled over the course of six issues. And instead of being destroyed, he is reduced to his true primal core and from that he rebuilds and is a somewhat different hero for the climax of the tale and the original inspiration was i so love that approach uh could that not be applied to the least expected character and i, I won't name names of various uh, marvel or dc characters but uh, i i had an idea of applying that that approach to an established character and uh, just started to develop what, what would the story be? Uh, what, what would be the elements to uh, pursue that same daredevil theme that uh, Frank and David did and apply it to a completely different character than Daredevil? Like the last character in the world you think would have this dark underbelly that would be exposed as they're, as they're broken and um, yeah. the storyline that I came up with ultimately had very little to do with the character. And so the storyline <laughs> stayed with me. And about every decade or so, decade uh, or so I would revisit the tale. Uh, and she would get a new name and a new identity and new powers. And I would try to figure out yet another way that I could tell this primal story of the breaking of a character. And the... Uh, lots of different people took their stab at it. Uh, one of the artists that worked on it way back in 89 was Adam Hughes. Okay, was cool. Ancient Adam Hughes. Oh, was. yeah, it goes back that far. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Mike Oming took a stab. Um, oh, nice. Oming. A few other artists. Mm -hmm. And uh, But the dilemma was always um, 
okay, the moment you, you if, if you're doing a character in the Marvel or DC universe, you've got all that established continuity and the, the universe is already pre-built for you. Yeah. And the moment you're trying to do a Marvel or DC type story outside of their universe, and mm -hmm. this is good advice for all the aspiring comic writers out there who want to do their own slam bang superhero, uh, the moment you don't have that established universe, you're building your own. And one of the dilemmas is you're really just building a, a clone of what Marvel and DC have done for the last 50 to 70 years. And uh, the story languished for probably, fifth, Furious probably languished for 15 years mm -hmm. uh, because I was faced with that dilemma of how do I tell her story at the same time I'm building a universe that you have to understand. And I would just flounder again and again yeah. and again. And uh, the, I guess the final ingredient to this long drawn out tale, uh, it was the death of Whitney Houston. Oh, uh, Whitney Interesting. Houston passed away early 2012. And uh, there was uh, one particular guy had a, had a response that, uh, it, everyone was pouring out their grief and their reaction, and he mm -hmm. came out and said, this isn't a surprise. We all saw this happen. And then a little bit later, Patton Oswalt tweeted, we watched her kill herself in slow motion, and nobody did anything. And I went, that is somewhere in there yeah. my hook for Furious. So instead of telling the tale... We don't want to go into spoilers or anything, yeah, but... Yeah, I won't. Instead of telling the tale of the superhero who falls, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take a completely other character and have the fall out of the way. And wow. this is the broken wreckage that is trying <laughs> to redeem themselves. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, people like uh, train wrecks. So, yeah. without going into spoilers, you, uh, you maybe gave a little hint in there, but... There is some, uh, there is some train wreck. Uh, there's a lot of them probably going on in the news right now. Yes. Um, doesn't matter when this was recorded because there always is. <laughs> so, so that's the sad truth. Very, very true. true. Uh, but I really liked. Um, by the end of the first issue, you get the idea. You, you, you're pretty well solid on what this spoiler will be. But it's an interesting new take, and. I think it's something probably, it touches on something that a lot of people in their spare time have probably thought to themselves a lot of, about how some people, uh, like you said, train wreck. Mm -hmm. so, so, um, the media has a fascination with human train wrecks, and Furious intends to exploit the exploitation of the media with train wrecks. Yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, Exploitation. There's a whole uh, TMZ built their lives around that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but I like to. Um, so, so you mentioned a number of artists. Who was the artist that finally went on to issue number for Furious? Uh, it was ultimately Victor Santos. Uh, he's a oh, Spanish nice. artist. He lives on the north, I believe, northern coast of Spain. And Ooh. I've been working with Victor for the past five years on Mice Templar. And nice. so he, he's been a dream to work with on, uh, on Furious. Good. Some history, so you work well together. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was going to say, the artwork was very nice. Um, it has, uh, I don't want to say rough edge to it, but there's a lot of uh, emotion that you can, like, the lines may blur a little bit when uh, getting angry and such. So I, 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 I like it. Um, so I do want to mention, so... Furious, it touches on, you got a superhero, uh, there's some emotional, there's some psychological issues going on, uh, there is, I want to say, probably a tale of redemption, or attempted redemption. Attempted uh, redemption, don't want to give anything away. No, um, and it's kind of a classic in storytelling, uh, manga probably touches on it a lot. But basically, all good intentions turn out wrong. So it, it, it comes on to that. Uh, so people, there's a lot of things in here that people will be able to relate to. And uh, once you read issue number one, I think it'll have a nice grab there at the end. Especially, yeah. 
<laughs> if I can go back and talk about the the building of a of a superhero universe with the decision to make her the very first superhero of her world, mm -hmm. her world otherwise is our world. Yeah. And so, like our world and its media, and how the, how would the media respond? if an actual real superhero showed up, is what we're exploring. And so I didn't have to bother with, uh, this isn't a tale with, uh, with superhero teams or generational yeah. legacies. Just here she is. Uh, she is the first of her kind. Yeah. She will not be the last. Ooh, nice little, nice little jab there. Um, yeah, I do like how the, uh, the media, she picks a name and the media gives her another one a little bit more... Uh, I don't want, not salacious, but a little bit more uh, descriptive, headline worthy. So, I, I did like that. We, we could explore this because there's no spoiler involved. It's yeah. kind of, it's, it's set up in the Dark Horse story. Yes. So, that essentially, she, she wants to be the beacon as an beacon expression of, of what she intends. Yes. Uh, but in the act of trying to do the right thing, uh, she has a tendency to lose her temper and beat people to bloody pulps. Bloody pulps. <laughs> Prompting the news media to dub her a little more accurately, Furious. Furious. And she hates that. Uh, but the dilemma becomes, she's not acting like the Beacon. She's acting like the label she's been given, but the point, the sticking point becomes... This isn't who I want to be, but this is who an outside force is telling me I have to be. Perception. I'm trying to put her in a box with a label. And that's going to be a major theme in the, in the first arc. Yeah. Um, I dig it. I think a lot of people can relate to that. So, um, I know we're running a little close on time. but So, I do want to mention that, like we said, it's coming out on the 29th. But on the 27th, we have a little uh, Twitter press conference. Yeah, that's uh, insane. Hashtag, hashtag uh, who, is, who is furious. And that's interesting. I haven't really seen too many uh, Twitter press conferences. so we'll, we'll see what she says. I thought she was a fictional character that I created, but come Monday, you never know. Yeah, it takes a mind of their own, don't they? So that's going to be interesting. I think uh, I'll probably try, I'll try to uh, jump in on that as my uh, work schedule allows, as we both know a little wrangling with my work schedule going on. <laughs> but, uh, so everyone should check out Furious. Uh, it is coming out on the 29th. And to get a little sneak preview, there you go. See, master the plug here. And, but, if you want to get a little sneak preview, get a little uh, straight from the horse's mouth here, you can sign in on the 27th, 7 p.m. Uh, hashtag, who is Furious? It's from Dark Horse Comics. They're running it, and it'll be... Oh, I, I think it'll be interesting. It's a, a new way to go. It's, who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> uh, I, it might tie in pretty well for Alter Ego. So, no spoilers, but it might tie into Alter Ego. So, everyone check it out. This is really interesting. A new comic coming from Dark Horse Comics and from Brian Glass. And thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Uh, classing up the joint with some wine. <laughs> Have some. Ooh, it does look, look good. good. Yep, looks good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much for joining us on Comic Station 29. Check out Furious. And as always, we will be back on Wednesdays with the new releases, some reviews, and everything. And unfortunately, with these interviews, you just get me, you don't get the girls. So. Have to live with that. I, I know Brian was very disappointed. So, yep. So, all right. Thank you very much, and we will see you on the next comic station. Take care.